All right. Um, yeah. Welcome. Um, thanks for coming. And um, now I'm going to give a small sort of uh, experience report um, and intro into making desktop apps with ClojureScript. And um, to do this, there are a couple of options. And um, I'm going to quickly outline why I've chosen the one I've chosen. So. Um, I don't know who of you are familiar with making desktop apps with web technologies, but a couple of years ago there were things like Titanium Accelerator, um, which got discontinued, um, I think, three years ago now. Um, so the predominant choices are Node WebKit, uh, which is now called NWJS, and Electron, which is powering Atom, the editor from GitHub. And since July this, July this year, also Lighttable, um, and as many of you may know, maybe uh, also Slack, which is very popular here, I guess. Um, and so this talk will be about making desktop apps with Electron and ClojureScript, and not focus on the other technologies that you can use. So Electron is a framework to allow you making desktop apps with web technologies. Um, that allows you to share code between your web applications and your desktop applications. I think if any one of you has used Slack, it's quite apparent that they use the same stuff for their desktop client that they use for their web client. And uh, yeah, Electron has a huge user base. Many people are using it. Um, GitHub uses it, Slack uses it. So there is sort of this ecosystem around it that's very ma major, and uh, you get lots of tooling for free, sort of. So I think one important question to ask is, uh, why at all would you want to write a desktop application? Um, many of them are not necessary, and many of them could be done with web technologies or as a website or web, applic web application. Um, so I think the biggest reason is you need a doc icon. Um, that's, that's really what you want. Um, and Electron is your ticket to get that. Um, but besides this joke thing, um, Electron really allows you to integrate with the operating system. So if you have a web application, um, you might be able to send notifications to the user through new APIs, but you cannot do things like uh, click a dock icon um, or have a badge at the, uh, in your icon, or uh, dropping things into an application often doesn't work as easily. And you can't have native menus. So if you're on a uh, tab in Chrome, you don't have this little bar on top of your screen where you can do things like editing and copying and whatever, all these things we most of the time do with keyboard shortcuts. And for me, this was not the reason why I got into Electron. For me, the reason to get into Electron was that I have access to the file system. And uh, that's something that has been possible with standard web APIs before. Um, but the file system APIs, they got deprecated. And so you're no longer able to access the file system um, from a browser tab unless you make people like drop files into your site or something else. But that's not really accessing the file system, but rather doing something with a file a user provided to you, which is actually quite different. So before we go into details in how you can make an Electron app with ClojureScript, I think it's important to cover how it basically works. Um, and so that's what we're going to do now. Electron consists of two parts, you could say. And uh, these two parts are the main process and the renderer. And so if you think about this, uh, the main process is sort of like your browser. And the individual render processes are the tabs in that browser. And uh, Electron is actually implemented based on libchromium, which is the open source part of Chrome. And so this model of uh, separate tabs being separate processes sort of fit quite well into this architecture. And the 
you can do many things in those renderer processes, um, but some things you can't do. So if you want to set the count on your doc icon for unread notifications or something like that, you can't do that from JavaScript in your uh, web application, right? Because there is no such API. And that's what the main process is for. So the main process allows you to sort of call into these native things and have bindings from JavaScript to all these native things, like setting a doc icon or defining how the application reacts when you drop a file on the doc icon, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, so the main process manages all your application windows. So you can have most, most applications might have one, but for some reason you could have multiple as well. And um, that's what the main process sort of handles. It creates windows, it loads some file in those windows, um, and these files might do something or not. And if you want to do something in the renderer that you can't do in a renderer, you need some way to communicate. And this communication sort of way is called IPC in Electron, which stands for Inter-Process Communication. Um, and there are sort of APIs for both parts of an Electron app, like the main process and the renderer, to send and receive messages and react upon those messages. So how does ClojureScript come into play? I've already said that the main process and the renderer are JavaScript things. So in the main process, you just write some node script thing. Um, you have lots of node modules available, actually all of them. So you can access the file system, for example. Um, and in the renderer, it's just like a web app, right? Like you have an HTML file, and you load some JavaScript file in that, which renders your application, shows nice, shiny things. And so what we need is we need two JavaScript files. We need one file for the main process and one file for our application in those renderer processes in our application windows. And now we're going to talk about how we can set up a project to support these two JavaScript artifacts that we want to use in our Electron application. Um, I'm going to use Boot because I've been using Boot for the last half year or even longer, um, and it worked quite nicely in this case. So what you can see here is the directory structure of my Electron application. Um, the build.boot file is just like line against project, project CLJ, and in resources there are a couple of files. Um, index.html is what I'm going to load in my renderer processes. Uh, package.json is just some electron thing, not really important. There's also not much in there. Um, and then those two CLJS Eden files, they define where I want to put my compiled JavaScript. And as you might be able to derive from the name, um, the main CLJS Eden file defines the JavaScript for the main process, and the renderer CLJS Eden file defines the JavaScript for the renderer process. And those two files uh, relate to namespaces also. And so the contents of those files look exactly like this. Um, they require two namespaces, or one respectively. Um, and the main build requires the main namespace, and the renderer build requires the renderer namespace. And they both call some initialization function. So let's look at how the main process looks or how it, how it starts the application. Um, what you can see here is our main namespace, and we require two of Electron's modules. And these modules are app and browser window. And the app is sort of this thing where you can um, create new windows uh, and register things, uh, register handlers. Um, and browser windows are just like to create new windows um, and load things in them. So if you look at the init browser function, uh, we create a new browser window, and then we load a URL uh, in that. And that's our index HTML I just previously showed in the resources. And when the app tells us it's ready to launch things, we just like create this window or initialize the browser. But this might not work as expected. 
Um, the problem is that when you compile ClojureScript, um, you can do that in two ways, right? You can do it advanced, and you can do it like with no optimizations. And depending on whether you do it with advanced or without optimizations, the file that will actually call this load URL function will be in a different place, right? Like if we do it with advanced, this file will be just target main.js. But if we do this with none, we have the, this one tiny module we specified um, in a very separate, very different directory. And because of this, the path we specified with the JSD name will not be correct anymore. So how can we work around that? Um, what I choose as an approach is to use a compiler flag um, to load the file from different locations. It's really not, uh, you can do many different things. You can do macros or whatever. Um, but really, you need to have this kind of handling to load the file from different places. OK, so we got to speed up. Um, let's look at the build.boot file, which is also not too long, but yeah, good to cover. What you can see here is that I have a development build, um, and we inject like the closure script REPL code and the reloading code, which is something like FigWheel, um, into our renderer build. And then we build the renderer code, which compiles all the closure script and stuff, um, and then we build our main build. Um, and because we are in our development build, and the default for our flag was false, um, we here set it to true through this closure defines thing. OK, and that's, that's really how it works. That's how you can make an Electron app. Um, and now we're going to go and do some demoing through a closure script REPL live. OK. So um, here, oh, should mirror that. OK, so um, here on the left, you can see the running compiler uh, thing that I already started because it takes a while to start. Um, and now I'm going to start the Electron app um, that is being compiled by this build. Um, I'm going to just move that here. So here we have our app. And here we have some example code. And I have a bunch of, uh, I should close this maybe. And I have a bunch of demos um, I'm going to work through now. And uh, the first one is how to do funny things with the doc, uh, doc icon. And uh, to do that, we need to connect to uh, the REPL server that we have running. Um, and start our closure script REPL. And then we reload this. And we go back to our file. And here we then can interactively evaluate stuff. So let me so OK, so we require the app uh, module. Um, but we have to do that in the main process. Um, and we also have to do at these uh, listeners in the main process. And I've already done that, so I don't have to restart uh, Electron after I started it. So this code is already in place in our main process. And now um, we can send messages through IPC. Um, with the label bounce dog or set badge. Um, and the main process will pick up those messages and react on them. In the bounce dog case, it will make the dog bounce. Um, and in the set badge case, it will set the badge. So we require the IPC module and we send a bounce dog message. And as you might have seen, it bounces on the left. Awesome. Um, and then we can uh, do things like set a message or like, you know, you have an unread count or something. Um, and so you can set this as well. Then we make a bounce again so you can see it. Um, and this kind of stuff is possible. 
And yeah, lots of this you do through IPC because from the renderer, you don't have access to those native sort of functionalities. Um, another thing that was actually like the, the main reason for me to, to play with Electron um, was file, sim, file system access, as I mentioned. And um, what's cool is that Electron provides you a bunch of uh, node modules in your renderer build. So you can actually require the FS module from node in your renderer build, which is weird in a way, um, but it works very well. Um, so we define those things, we define current deer, and then we can write some file just like regular, uh, as if we would write a node script or something. And just called this, and then I can show you, prove it. Um, what was the file name? <laughs> Uh, written from CLJS, and then I kept this, um, and I just wrote this file. I can remove it again, too, so you, you can be sure I didn't lie to you. Um, oh, now I removed it twice. And it's there again. So this kind of stuff is really handy. Like, if, if you want to make anything with the file system, um, Electron is probably the only way you will get access to it using this kind of web stuff, like if you don't want to write native apps. Um, OK, then um, notifications. Um, this is really simple. Um, so I had a very hard time getting this to work. Um, the fun thing is, I don't know, does, does reattach to user namespace mean anything to you if you're a Mac user? Um, OK. so. In Mac, if you start things from Tmux, it's somehow different as if you start them from a regular terminal. So for, I think, three days, I tried to figure out why I cannot send notifications um, from my Electron window. Um, and it turned out that this was because it was started from Tmux. So you install this little utility that makes your Tmux behave like a regular terminal. Um, and everything works. Um, and that took me like three days to figure out. So. If you now do this, then you should get a notification, but you don't. Hmm. OK. This is one out of three demos that failed. I think that's so far a good statistic. Um, it worked when I tested it, I swear. Um, OK, so what I, what I wanted to do with Electron really was um, I wanted to make an app that um, provides me with a nice gallery of screenshots I took. Um, and for that, I needed file system access. And I was looking how I could do this with like a regular browser and stuff. But you know, it turned out that's not possible. And uh, one of the things I wanted to have in this app, or the idea I played with, um, is that you should also be able to um, trigger uh, a new screenshot from uh, the application. And in Mac OS X, there's this really neat utility screen capture that you can tri trigger from the terminal. Um, and Electron provides you with, all the, with many node modules. And so also in the renderer, you can just require things like child process and then um, call functions on those modules and trigger um, something like a screen capture thing. And now you can see I can take a screenshot and it will be saved to wherever I told it to be saved. And yeah, that's it with demos. Um, let's go back to this thing. Um, OK. Now I don't have the preview anymore. What's next? Demos? OK. Um, OK, so I think what's, what's to take away um, is that Electron is great if you need the stuff it provides. But don't underestimate, underestimate what, what you need to do to package it up nicely. So getting a, a demo app up and running on your computer starting it from the shell 
It's really easy, takes two minutes, um, really straightforward. But if you want to make it an app file like that is, has the polish of Slack's application, um, there's a lot of work involved. So you have to rebrand Electron, you have to change the icons, you have to change the name in 15 different uh, data files. Um, and yeah, this is one thing to do. There are scripts to make this easier. Um, but also, if you plan to ship on Electron apps, you have to package them and have infrastructure in place for updating them and all these kind of things. So it comes with the burden of being a native app as much as it comes with the benefits of being a native app. And I think that's it. If you're interested in this stuff, the repo and the demos and everything I showed is in this repo. Um, and you can open issues and um, not ask me questions now because I'm over time. Thank you.